We need someone to jump in a Thunderbird jet and do this air show. Can you do it? Yeah, well, if you watch this video series to the end, you'll be able to say yes. What's up guys, it's Ryan. Welcome to my channel. I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and this video is gonna be a little bit different. So someone on the B-Jet Clean Instagram hit me up and they said, hey, can you teach us what it's like to be a Thunderbird pilot? So instead of just telling you what it's like, together we're gonna ride along in a cockpit. You're gonna be with moi, yours truly, and I'm gonna be your instructor. So my last year on the Thunderbirds, I was an instructor pilot teaching other Thunderbirds how to do it, and now you, my friend, get to be in those shoes. This is gonna be a video series. We're gonna do small chunks, probably 10 minutes or so of actual cockpit time. So definitely make sure you check out the entire series so that at the end I can sign you off officially as a Thunderbird pilot who can jump in a jet if we need you. <laughs> Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me and hey, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a pilot somewhere gets their wings. Oh boys, I'm back! Stay to the end of this video and again, check out the entire series to get the lowdown on what it's like to be a Thunderbird pilot. And I wanna stress guys, these are training videos. These are never before seen videos. So throughout, I'm gonna be stopping at certain points and talking to you about things that I need you to do to stay in position or different things I'm seeing or ways that I would operate the aircraft. Or I might just talk as the video is rolling if it's a real time style correction. With that said, I want you to strap in, lock that canopy down and let's rock. Okay guys, so that's me giving a shout to the crew chiefs. The crew chiefs are underneath the jet right now, making sure this beast is ready to fly. And for me, I'm all about just the, the amazing ability of those crew chiefs to keep this jet in pristine flying condition. I'm gonna be pushing this jet to the limit here in a second. And the fact that they can get this thing ready to do that every single day, sometimes twice a day, is super impressive. So I'm giving them some shout outs, I'm giving them some claps, I'm giving them some energy because of all that they do for me. And it's just, it just gets me motivated and gets me pumped up as well. So as you're strapped into this jet, I want you to be excited and I want you to just be pumped knowing that you've got some of the best maintenance crews in the world taking care of your aircraft. Okay, so as we're taxiing out, there's an F-15C in the background. At Nellis, the aircraft on the ramp there are just exciting. I mean, every time I taxi past them, as you can see, I'm looking at them right now. I mean, it's just an amazing mecca for the fighter pilot and for fighter jets inspiring to taxi there every time. And so I'm doing a few things here. I'm gonna adjust some stuff here in a second, but as I'm taxiing, this is golden time. So for you, I want you to get everything set up. I want you to make sure that you've got the right points loaded in your database, because when you're doing your ground ops, normally you're caged forward straight ahead. So you can't use some of the things on the side. So as you can see right there, I'm adjusting some of the papers. I'm looking at some different things that we're gonna do, some of the different show sequences. I'm making sure I have the right one up. There's a high show, a low show, and then there's a show that we do that's kind of in the middle of the two. So essentially I'm making sure I got the right thing up and my packet on my leg because once you blast off, you don't have time for that. All right, so here we are on the runway. We've taxied into position. Now I'm doing some last minute checks, making sure I have the right points set up in my database. And the jet is like a computer. It's like an old school computer. So right now I've got it pulled up so that I can see what points we're gonna fly to so I can back the boss up and make sure that we're on the right course as we depart the airspace. But guys, here's the thing, okay? So we have strapped into this jet. And before that, you know, you had hopefully a you know, relatively normal morning or afternoon. And what's gonna happen right off the bat on takeoff, when you're in the Thunderbird Diamond, which is where you're, you are right now, thank you, Captain Obvious, <laughs> you're essentially gonna go from zero to 180 miles an hour, you're gonna take off, you're gonna accelerate to 450 miles an hour, and then you're gonna do a loop. Oh, just a normal Monday, just a 
400 mile an hour loop on takeoff, no big deal. But the big thing here is just making sure that you've got the right mindset because here in a couple seconds, you're gonna be two feet away from an aircraft and you're both gonna be going 400 plus bills, which in my opinion was one of the more challenging things to do as a Thunderbird pilot because it's a mentality shift. You've got all these different things on your mind. You're trying to figure out you know, what you're gonna do for the rest of the show sequence, but really you have to forget about all that and you have to be in the moment. And that's a big takeaway that I want you to think about as we go through this training series. Again, there's gonna be multiple videos like this, so definitely make sure you see all of those videos. But throughout those videos, it's gonna be a mindset of, all right, I'm focused on the moment because the safety margins, guys, are super slim. So now at the last minute here, I'm making sure everything is set up and good to go, making sure the jet is healthy and ready to rock. And here in a second, we're gonna blast off. Here we go. All right, last minute check on my engines, making sure those are good to go. You can hear the engines winding up, and then I just release the brakes as the boss calls release the brakes. Burners is what he's gonna call next. I'm gonna throw the jet into afterburner. You can kind of see his nozzle there kind of open up a little bit as the afterburner kicks in. And we're gonna get airborne relatively quickly in these things because there's so much thrust. So I'm making sure I have good ground clearance. I'm gonna get the gear up and now I'm gonna tuck it in to formation position. And again, this is when the heart starts beating pretty fast. So you gotta align the front of that missile rail with the back of the canopy and that's what I'm striving to do right now. All right, so here we are. We've started our move upwards and you can tell we're essentially almost 90 degrees nose high. So going from zero to this in a matter of seconds is a gut check. But I'm really excited because at this point we're in perfect formation position. So good job, well done. But I'm aligning the front of that missile rail. It's a little arrowhead looking thing on the side of the F-16 with the back of the canopy. So I'm a little bit wider here and I'm gonna start working my way into formation position. And then the back of it, the back of that same missile rail is gonna align with a scoop that's in the middle of that red portion of the tail where the tail starts to go up. There's like a little notch, it's a tiny little notch, and that's where I'm gonna align the back of that missile rail. And again, the handling characteristics at slow speed are different than fast speed, but we'll get more into that in a second. Let's keep going with this loop. All right, so you can see there at the top of the loop, it gets what I like to call dynamic. Yeah, it's a technical fighter pilot term for mm -hmm. When things get dynamic, it's typically in a regime of flight that you don't do too often. So when you get slow over the top, the control surfaces don't have as much air moving across them, so they're not quite as responsive. And you gotta be very careful up there as well because you're using a lot of rudder. And if you overcorrect, you could slam yourself into the jet next to you. Now, this is a very dynamic, might be my favorite word right now, part of the flight. Because when you're at this point, you have to start tucking it back into formation position, but you can't overshoot. So you have to make sure that you've got the perfect amount of energy as you slide it back into position. Let's continue. So as we're continuing down, the power is gonna come back because we've got so much energy pushing us downwards. So you gotta make sure you're able to get the throttle back so it's kinda like you're slowing down when you almost feel like you should be speeding up. So it's a little bit challenging there from a mental perspective as far as knowing where to put your throttle. So now I've tucked it back into formation position and we're continuing on with the departure. At this point, I'm focused solely on the boss. I may take a couple quick glances just to make sure we're on the correct course and just backing each other up. And when it comes to backing each other up, it's all about mutual support. So even though my focus right now as I'm flying in the Thunderbird Diamond is to make sure I'm in perfect formation position, I'm also backing up the boss and I'm the instructor here as well. So I'm also looking across the formation at number three. So number one's in the lead, number two's on the left, number three is on the right, number four is at the bottom. So I'm looking across the formation at number three and I'm looking down and across at number four. I'm just 
double checking everybody, making sure everybody's safe in position as well, because I'm also noting that so that I could debrief later. I'm not gonna debrief that real time, obviously, because we're focused on the rest of the mission. All right, so you can see there, I'm pretty excited. You know, I'm shaking my head yes. I'm like, okay, great. Look like an awesome loop on takeoff. And again, one of the more challenging things that we do, and it happens immediately. So now we've got a little bit of breathing room as we transition to our training area. Now this wouldn't happen in a show because in the show we go right into the show, but the loop on takeoff is a good warm up if we're gonna go right into the show. But now I'm able to look down at my jet, make sure everything's working well, make sure the gas gauge is good and that I'm in a position to to operate effectively once that show starts. So there you go, guys. There is your first lesson on how to become an effective, solid, sounding cool on the radio, of course, Thunderbird pilot. So thanks for being here for lesson number one. You're looking good. We'll see you for lesson number two. Before you go though, if you would, just dominate that like button for me. And hey, maybe even subscribe and tune back in to this series on how you can become the next Thunderbird demonstration pilot. So glad you're here. Most of all, hope you have a great day.